Hello, my name is Dr. James DeMio, and I am the director of the Orgone Biophysical Research Laboratory in Ashland, Oregon. I want to welcome you to the Orgone Laboratory's video archive, which contains a great deal of material that I think you'll find of much interest. Uh, this archive covers a lot of my work going back to the 1970s, actually, plus seminars, conferences uh, that were hosted at my institute, which included speakers from other different parts of the world who had also done similar work. Now, the work involved is verification of Wilhelm Reich's discoveries. Uh, that includes both his discoveries in the behavior sciences as well as his later discoveries with the life energy, the orgone energy, and life energy in people, in organisms, in uh, the atmosphere, and the universe itself. Um, I've thought about how best to present this material, and it seems to me the best way I could do that is to talk about my own research uh, and the development of it, and uh, this will give you a, a good feeling for the kind of material that's going to be included. I had actually learned about Reich uh, straight out of high school and uh, tried to do some investigation of his work while I was an undergraduate studying environmental science. And I was able to do so, but more significantly, my later graduate work at the University of Kansas in uh, Lawrence, Kansas, uh, allowed me the opportunity to make serious scientific investigations of Reich. Uh, that was mostly due to the, with the help of two professors there, uh, Professor Robert Nunley and Professor Robert Herlich. And uh, with their assistance and oversight from some of the other uh, professors in the geography department, uh, the atmospheric science specialists, I proposed to them that we should study Wilhelm Reich's cloudbuster device, which was the most outrageous of all of Reich's claims, uh, at least according to the, the conventional view of things. Uh, and the idea was that if the cloudbuster actually worked, then it would have some strong implications about the veracity, the, the accuracy of his earlier work with the orgone accumulator and the discovery of the orgone energy itself. Because the Cloudbuster device cannot work on the basis of anything in a conventional manner. So uh, I did a two year study of that. I actually built a good sized uh, Cloudbuster device and it was tested out for two years uh, in the atmosphere over Kansas. And uh, the study for results were to look at the rainfall data and cloud cover data for the whole state of Kansas and see if there was any correlation between the start of the operations with the Cloudbuster and the, the, uh, any kind of variations in the data, the official National Weather Service data from, uh, I think it was around 200 different rainfall and weather measuring stations within that state. And the, the bottom line of the study was, yes, there was a strong correlation for increased cloud cover and rains on the day of and uh, with a, a persistence factor going on. This opened a lot of people's eyes uh, within the university there. And uh, I later went on to study uh, Wilhelm Reich's sex economic theory, which is a theory he put out that is based on his clinical work, of course, at the time when he was a psychoanalyst. And basically, Reich was arguing that, it, that the talk therapy of psychoanalysis is not what counts. What counts is the expression of emotion from bottled up traumatic experiences. So whereas psychoanalysis tried to get you to talk and talk and talk about your, your problems, Reich developed a therapeutic approach for um, getting people to discharge their emotion. And from this came uh, usually uh, expressions of grief and misery regarding sexual problems that people had. They were in bad marriages, they 
they were uh, raped or something like this in childhood. And, uh, and so Reich studied human sexuality in a very focused way, more so than anybody before him uh, or since, one might, since then, one might argue. Um, what I did was I, I undertook a global cross-cultural study on factors of human emotion, human sexuality, and various social institutions that impinge upon those factors. Uh, for over 1,170 different world cultures, and I produced um, what was the most ambitious global cross-cultural analysis of human behavior that had ever been done. I didn't realize it at the time. I published a, a, a dissertation on that, which was accepted because the methodology was sound and uh, there was new discovery involved in it. Uh, my, my peer review committee at that time was uh, four geographers and two anthropologists. So it was uh, a breakthrough study. But in any case, I, uh, I graduated with a PhD from the University of Kansas, having done these two major studies verifying Wilhelm Reich. And I, I went on to teach for about 10 years in the universities. Uh, later, uh, I was an instructor at the University of Kansas and then uh, an assistant professor at Illinois State University, then later at the University of Miami, and then uh, finally a, uh, a position at, uh, uh, at the University of Northern Iowa in Waterloo. And in every one of those cases, I was appreciated because the students flocked to my courses. They were interested in what I had to say. Um, but on the other hand, everything I did was really controversial for the, the behavior science and the physical science departments. So I, I got tired of the uh, two steps forward, one step back kind of uh, problem that I encountered within the academic world. And I quit to form my own institute on the West Coast in California and then later moving to Ashland, Oregon, where I live today. And throughout that period of both the university studies, the university professor, then later in my own institute, I investigated with very precise approaches, scientific approaches, to investigate Reich's claims about the orbital energy accumulator. Now, I have, I have done research showing that if you charged seedlings in the orgone accumulator, that they would grow longer and stronger and, and bigger. And uh, I did this as, a, as a, an extended study over three years partially blinded because my students at my independent study courses would come every summer and I would have them do the experiment under my guidance and they would uh, thereby verify uh, for themselves to see that this was real. Uh, and as I say, those were some, somewhat blinded because I didn't uh, uh, run the experiments. My students didn't know anything about it, but they followed the protocol that I laid out and they got very good results. It, it turns out about 35% boost in the overall growth, as well as uh, other factors. And I published a paper on that, and it was widely ignored, uh, but nevertheless, it was a big verification for Reich on the orgone accumulator. Uh, I also had a good microscope, and I verified some of Reich's easier bion experiments. You know, Reich found this uh, discovery of this small little particle called the bion, which was a degenerate uh, uh, product when matter was allowed to, to uh, swell and disintegrate in water. Not only uh, non-living matter, but living matter as well. Moss, grass, human tissue, all would degenerate into these little bion particles. Um, and Reich's work on this is, is profound. He should have got a Nobel Prize for that. Uh, so I, I wound up uh, making those early studies. I didn't publish anything on it for quite a while, but I came into contact with other scientists who were doing the Bion research. I studied with them, and I, uh, I actually invited them to my center where we had, uh, for about four or five years, 
presenting a seminar on bions, the Reich blood test, and the cancer biopathy. And these seminars were attended by about 30 or 40 uh, students, professors, some top microbiologists came, and uh, it was quite an exciting uh, bit of, bit of uh, presentation and research. Now besides the acu organ accumulator studies on plants, I did a series of physical experiments showing the electrostatic anomaly inside the organ accumulator. Uh, there's a thermal anomaly. It creates not only a little bit of electrostatic charge, but it creates a little bit of a thermal increase inside the accumulator. There's a humidity anomaly, also higher humidity inside the organ accumulator than outside of it. Same with temperature, same with the electrostatic or electroscopical properties of the air. Uh, I also found that by charging a Geiger tube, Geiger Muller tube, or a neutron counter tube inside the organ accumulator, it would eventually, after many months of charging, yield powerful high counts per minute as compared to an uncharged Geiger Muller tube. And uh, this is, was something that Reich observed first and talked about and wrote about, and I was able to verify that. Uh, I have videotapes of that material, which will also eventually be included in the archive, this video archive. Uh, one of the other uh, things is, uh, that I pioneered on my own was the use of spectroscopy, ultraviolet and visible spectroscopy, as a means of investigating the effects of the organ energy charge upon water. And uh, it verified this powerfully, that organ charged water has a high uh, ultraviolet absorption and uh, also a high uh, near ultraviolet and blue fluorescence. This was a direct verification of Reich's ideas and writings on what he called organotic lumination, as well as it, it, uh, it followed a parallel track to what the uh, other classical research scientists were finding with water structure uh, in their own experiments. So all of these experiments that I did were tightly controlled and eventually the papers presented to different journals that had peer review committees and, uh, and was published. So it met, met all the basic standards of scientific discovery of having uh, controlled experiments uh, with peer review and so forth but also, again, mostly widely ignored. During this period of laboratory work, independent from the universities, I also continued with the cloud-busting research. In the 1990s, I was approached by the governments of Israel and later in Namibia and Eritrea, Africa, to help end severe historical droughts afflicting their nations. In each case, the expenses and logistical supports were covered by those governments, and the droughts were ended after about a week of work applying Reich's methods. Unfortunately, and in spite of great efforts to do so, I never got that level of support for ending severe droughts in the United States. So my research um, is one thing that's going to be presented, uh, either the videos of the actual research itself uh, or discussions of the papers with a lot more photographs than what would be in the paper itself. Um, also, I did some new research on what Wright called his organ energy motor. And this I found to be fascinating. It paralleled the work in some ways of Townsend Brown on what he called electrogravitics. Actually, Reich and Brown actually had some small communication uh, in Reich's last years. And it seems that uh, both of those questions about electrogravitics from Townsend Brown and Wilhelm Reich's organ energy motor uh, allow us to approach questions such as gravity from a new perspective. And Reich was aware of this. He wrote about this. In doing that research, I also came across a lot of research on the cosmic ether, the cosmic ether of space, which is considered to be uh, disproven although the good scientist will know that you can never really disprove something. You can only prove something. And actually, an re honest review of the literature 
shows that the cosmic ether was indeed detected and proven. Uh, but just politically suppressed. And Reich was aware of that. He talked about the ether quite a lot. And he said that there is no vacuum, that the ether is a real thing, but he called it life energy. He said he accepted that Michelson Morley was being misinterpreted in the classical way, when in fact Michelson Morley, as we know today, got a small little effect in their ether detection, as did others such as Dayton Miller. So there's a whole lot of very interesting work there that's at the cutting edge of modern scientific discovery, but it's, it's like everything else that's truly important. It is being ignored, widely ignored, except by small groups of cutting edge scientists. Now, we also had seminars at my institute on children of the future, talking about how to raise healthy children from the perspective of Reich's discoveries. Uh, on the Bions Reich blood test and cancer biopathy, as I previously mentioned. Also, a seminar on remembering Reich by several of Reich's associates who were still alive at the time. They've all passed on now, regrettably. Um, I did a seminar on construction and use of the Orgon Energy Accumulator at my institute, showing people how to build the Orgon Accumulators. And eventually, I wrote a book on the subject, uh, which is, I think, mostly known, uh, called the Orgon Accumulator Handbook. And uh, that contains a lot of information, especially the, the third uh, revised edition, which is now available. We had a new research in ergonomy conference that was held at my institute, uh, two of them, I believe. And uh, one of them uh, in 2015 uh, has already been transferred to video and is now available through the video archive. Another one from 2017 will be uh, reviewed for uh, for presentation. So the video archive actually has some free materials, but the the bulk of it we're going to have to charge a little bit of money to cover the the very large expenses that we've incurred in uh, gathering and archiving and and transferring to digital and so on of these older video materials, and of course the equipment that's been necessary uh, to accomplish that task. So I want to get all of that material available through the video archive, and uh, it's going to take us a while to do that, but we've made a start, and it's available now, and uh, you can go there, and you can either uh, pay for viewing one video, a small amount, I think it's about $6, uh, or you can pay $50 approximately to get access to the entire video archive for a month. So you can go there and pay the full fee and see all of what we've got now. And then later on, as we've added more, peop more uh, videos there, you can, you can go back again. So it's, it's uh, been a lot of hard work, also a lot of fun, and very educational to, for me to re be reviewing these materials that go back to the 1970s and 80s which I haven't seen uh, for myself for in many years. They've all been transferred to digital with the highest resolutions we can possibly do, even though the originals were in uh, formats like VHS or Umatic or Betacam SP, some in uh, Digital 8, some in Hi8. <laughs> we had to gather the transfer equipment here, uh, which we, we got uh, all that equipment assembled and made those transfers, and now we're we're putting them to a higher resolution as what we get now with this new camera we have, which is a 1080p um, system. I think you'll find it educational and uh, fun as well, and very, very interesting materials. So I want to thank you for your interest and support, and uh, uh, please let other people know that this video archive is available. Once again, thank you.